Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Ballet at Brand. Uh, so later on today at 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, I've got a, a live stream with Mystic Kid. But in the meantime, I kind of wanted to go over some of the hex price. Uh, I know the other day when I was doing my stream, it looked like we were going down. And according to Richard's most recent unboxing and his $500,000, uh, you know, unboxing type of deal, he uh, he he said maybe we've bottomed in hex. So I kind of wanted to look at that real quick and just see uh, what that might mean, okay? So this is uniswap.hex.vision. This is just version two. Once again, it's the only version you should be looking at when it comes to the most like recent price data. Um, so this is the daily itself. And it looks like, to me, it looks like the bottom was, uh, or at least the most recent bottom was this, uh, you know, 0 0.22608 uh, from what I saw here. If you look at this candle, you can see 0.22608200, right? So I missed the 200, but it's okay. Uh, so when I looked at the most recent high, which was, uh, let's see, what was it? It was it was like 51, 52 cents. I have the coordinates, uh, the coordinates here we can actually take a look at. Uh, 51, 3, 1,000, right? When I take a look at the most recent high and we just draw it down to where the most recent bottom was, uh, that's a 55.94% correction. And so it's just something to kind of look at, right? I know uh, Richard talks about that, hey, you know, to to be able to experience these mad gains, you also have to uh, sometimes stomach these uh, these downturns and these dips. And unfortunately, I saw a handful of people message me saying that they had sold at a loss, some of them at a 50% loss, some of them at a loss in general. And it's a, it's a shame, right? Because... It really just is a cycle. You know, we can see how many green months that there's been in Hex. And I mean, October's not even over, right? We've still got 10 or 11 days until it's over. So this could technically end in a green candle. But something that I wanted to look at, because once again, it's, uh, it's relevant to where Hex is going. Nobody knows when the actual snapshot is going to be. Nobody knows when Pulse Chain is going to be launched. Uh, besides Richard, when he gives that go-ahead. Um, but I know a lot of people that weren't staked and that were 100% liquid. And when when you have that kind of position and you don't have anything incentivizing you to hold, then it's just like any other crypto, say Bitcoin or Ethereum or anything else. It's just holding liquid. And now you've got more of an opportunity to easily sell that full bag uh, as the price dips a little bit. You might not think it's going to recover, but usually that's the time where most people are capitulating that you end up seeing like a, a V bottom, it's called, where it, it finds a wick, finds a bottom, and then, you know, makes a green candle uh, back upward. So this is just the monthly itself. You can kind of see it's, you know, testing those different levels that I was showing you. Um, but I mean, today we're on a we're on a green candle. It seems pretty, pretty strong. So something to look at, something to consider. Uh, once again, I think people should should really be preparing themselves for whatever may happen, right? Even if you are retired, even if you are like really doing well in Hex, you should also prepare <clears throat> for that what if scenario, right? I didn't expect this 55% dip, um, but you should prepare for for that kind of scenario. If you have bills to pay, if you have, you know, no other... Uh, you know, actual assets that are generating revenue, then now you need to consider, you know, three months in the future, six months in the future. It's always important to have a, a little bit of a savings and a little bit of a, a safety blanket for when things like this do happen. Because uh, once again, I didn't expect it. Not many other people expected it from, from what I've seen. Um, and it can really shake people out of the market that had just gotten in. But what we saw with even Big Payday, right? Big Payday had a uh, an 86% dump. That was absolutely uh, insane. And it's always at those dumps when the the fear is the worst. It's always at those dumps where they say, okay, Hex is going back to a penny. And then I remember actually when, uh, when Hex had first launched that for the adoption amplifier, you needed Ethereum, right? Because you would mint your own Hex via the smart contract and adoption amplifier. And Ethereum... You know, Hex itself launched in a bear market. And I remember Ethereum being like uh, an absolute low of like 89, you know, $90, something like that from, from what I remember. And people at the time were saying, 
this is usually when you know it's kind of like a, a good sign to maybe be a bottom or maybe to accumulate is people were saying that Ethereum was going to go back to, you know, three to ten dollars. And that was the time where, you know, people uh, people kind of loaded up and, and took that opportunity uh, for their advantage. So something else that I do want to look at that that is relevant once again, uh, it's not super pertinent to the actual hex price itself, but it's something to consider, right? Because Richards talked about, hey, this this actual coordinate itself right here, we can see that it's at $65,000. So that was the absolute top for Bitcoin most recently. And I just saw it, you know, getting back to 64,133 and something like that. And, you know, we see it getting really close. Um, I still think that Richard's thesis is correct until it's until it's disproven. And if it is happened to be disproven, then we know that, okay, this market is doing something different. It's not doing the full 85% retracement of the whole. And uh, it's something to consider. So I just wanted people to, uh, to look at this. This is on just the monthly itself. And then I think we can go, one second here. I think we can go to just the weekly really quick here. And we can kind of see, you know, it's kind of battling between, I don't know, like this 30,000 and obviously the 60, you know, 5,000 has kind of been a range that it's been chopping up uh, since, uh, since like January, right? So it's kind of been doing one of these waves. And from what I've seen, right, we saw that it, it bounced off right here and got rejected and obviously went back down. But now it's making uh, another attempt. So we'll see if that ends up happening or not. If it does, once again, if it does pass 65,000, then Richard's thesis uh, on that was incorrect. And uh, he'll kind of have to update his worldview. And so will people like myself and many others that follow his calls and, and follow his logic as well. So something I wanted people to look at. And, uh, you know, it's, it's exciting times in general. Uh, even though Bitcoin has been uh, pumping up a little bit, I still think this ETF news might be something that could be a a topping indicator. Uh, we'll see if it does pass that 65,000 number. Just uh, just a hunch from what I've seen in the past from 2017. They were saying the same thing with the CME futures that it was going to be a major bullish event and it turned out to be the opposite. So sometimes the market can do the opposite of what most people are expecting. So once again, we'll have to kind of take a look at that. But at the end of the day, even when HEX is dipping and even when it is consolidating downwards, people should really take into consideration the actual daily payout that you're getting. So if we go to hexdailystats.com, this is the very last thing I'll show, and then we'll end the, uh, the little short segment right here. We're gonna go to, once again, hexdailystats.com. Shout out to, uh, to Ryan and Togo. But you can see we're on day 686. You can see the liquidity, the payout per T-share. But this is really the number I wanna be looking at, right? Is the, the payout per T-share because this number itself has been pretty much above, uh, let's just call it above 5.7 for some considerable amount of time. And what that means is, hey, even if the price is going down, for me, it's not really relevant because I'm still 95% staked, right? And so it's the accumulation of the actual hex and of the actual shares that for me is the game that I'm playing. And for a lot of other hexagons that are OGs as well that have been here for a long time, that's the game that they're playing too. Because if you're trying to play these short-term games, it's a lot easier, once again, to get chopped out, to get feared out, right? Maybe maybe now you think Bitcoin's going to break the $65,000 all-time high, and maybe you start going to chase. And any time you start chasing something, as opposed to waiting for it to come to you and wait for that pump to happen, then you can have... a uh, you know, bad decisions made and, you know, you can't have losses in there. So I want people to look at the actual liquidity, to look at the daily payout per T-share. Once again, it doesn't have to be a T-share that you own. You can have 1 billion shares. Um, any amount of shares that you have means that for that length of the stake, every single day, you're going to get paid out uh, a portion of the interest, a portion of the penalties, etc. Okay, so you can see we're at $16.89 billion locked and uh, it's doing very well. We can see the, the USDC liquidity, the liquidity pool for HEX. And once again, this is something that 
is normal. It's something that's happened many, many times in the past. And it's an opportunity for those that maybe didn't have Hex and wanted to get in, but maybe they didn't want to get in at a absolute top as we just saw recently. So it allows those that have been waiting on the sidelines for a while to accumulate the bag. And we don't know when the actual snapshot is going to be, but you might be able to also qualify for that two for one uh, you know, copy of Hex on Pulse Chain if those people that didn't have Hex were accumulating it during this dip. And so last thing I'll say is even if you bought the top, right, say 52 cents is when you bought and you see it go down to 30 uh, or actually, you know, 22, 21 something cents. Well, if you still have some, some uh, dry powder, they call it, right? If you still have some dry powder and some liquid fiat, then you can kind of average down and you can make your, your buy, instead of it being 52 cents, you can average down as the, the price consolidates and, and finds a bottom. But now, say if you bought at, I don't know, 32,000 and then 28, or sorry, 32 cents and then 28 cents and then maybe 24 cents, now your actual average of the hex is not at 52 cents, which was the high, it's now at a lower because you accumulated down as well. So that's something that people consider. I know dollar cost crypto is a huge fan of that dollar cost averaging and not doing everything in one shot, right? Not just selling everything at, at one time or buying everything at one time, but rather kind of uh, accumulating and developing a position and uh, portfolio. So that's all I really have. Wanted to uh, share the interesting news that uh, Richard said this might be the bottom, right? And he's really good at the technical analysis and he's really good at the uh, the scent the sentiment uh, in general. So it just might be the bottom, uh, you know, fingers crossed, right? No one likes to see uh, the, their bag go down that they just bought or other people ask them why it's going down. But at the end of the day, the, the wealthy people, just like Kareem said, in the clip that I made with him and Gerardo, the wealthy people and the successful people in the world and in finance and crypto, they do what other people's don't. So when people were selling that 55, almost 56% uh, retracement and dip and dump, um, other people were accumulating and other people were buying that fear and, and selling the greed and things like this. So that's something to consider the, the wealthy people and the, the people that have been around for the longest in my opinion, are something that you should really consider when you're factoring in your own opinion. Because the person that just got here, they're not going to have the price history and the actual knowledge possibly of the actual cycle and of it being a natural move and not just a random dump. We've seen it dump many times before and we've seen it dump a lot more than this. So this really is a uh, little test in the water for the people that Held on, congratulations. And I'd consider people to to stake, right? Consider incentivizing yourself to not just be holding when it's going down, but every single day to be earning that passive income. And then you end the stake once it's uh, once it's due. So that's what a lot of people are doing. And that's why a lot of us don't really care about what the price is doing because every single day we're being paid either way. And unless you're selling right now, then you really shouldn't be worrying about it. So go to Hex.Vision, look at when other people are ending their stakes. And that way you can see when there's going to be a majority of the supply on the market. And then you can kind of, you know, you can kind of infer from there that if there's a majority of the supply on the market, say in December, November, October, you know, Q4, then maybe now there's going to be more sell pressure as opposed to the other months where more people are staked and they're not ending all their stakes at one time. Okay, so it's a 15 minute video. Hope some people got something out of this. And then once again, myself and Mystic Pemp, we will be doing a live stream in about three hours and six minutes, okay?